Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio this morning here on behalf of Art Joy of Sharing Facebook group and the monthly cha I mean the challenge for the month of November is Art Journal Habit hashtag Art Journal Habit and I think you can put 2019 on there. Um, I'm seeking inspiration and since it's fall and we're fast approaching Thanksgiving I thought that I would try and recreate these guys with more shading. Now this came off of um, I think this came from something I found in Pinterest in 2017 when did I start this? Oh I didn't write it in there um, and as you can see, I played around with it, but I never played around with any kind of shading whatsoever. Well, a little bit, but not much to speak of. And I have tried with watercolors in the past, but not, you know, not really understanding what I was doing. And I still don't. So there you go. <laughs> so I would like to put this in my book here. And I've been cruising Pinterest looking at different um, tutorials and that kind of stuff. So... I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to and I'm going to sketch my pumpkins and then I'm going to paint them. But let me say something that I was talking to my friend Peg last night and we were talking about the things that I've discovered since I started doing the watercolor in this book. I don't like this book. I mean, let me take that back. I like the book. I'm not crazy about the paper. This is not I can't remember what um, tablet I cut this paper out to make this book. This book is not meant for watercolor, but I like the smoothness of the paper, and this is very textured watercolor paper, and I don't like that. I like, and it's on both sides, so there's not one side that's textured and one side that's smooth sort of thing. It's all textured paper, and I'm not really crazy about it, uh, especially as a doodler, as I was telling her last night, that when you're a doodler, more times than not, you prefer a smooth surface so that it doesn't kill the nibs on your pens like the microns the um, I have more expensive pens in the in the living room in a, in a zip bag that I keep next to uh, or on my side of the table so that I can doodle at night while I watch TV with my husband so I'm not crazy about this paper but I'm gonna do the best I can and that's the nice thing about doing a challenge is that I've discovered things I do and do not like about maybe my style, about color, forms, shapes, anything like that. And I'm going to say this, there are certain things that I am not crazy about. I'm not crazy about this page. For me, it's an assault on my eyes. I like more subtle, flowy watercolors. This was done with the um, DeWitt watercolor pencils. And I'm not crazy about the watercolor pencils, but it might be that I'm not crazy about them on textured paper. So I may try them again on a smoother watercolor paper to see if I still feel that way. So, you know, it's, it's all about experimenting. All right, so here we go. I, you know, these are two, almost three years old. I drew these, and I'm not sure I remember how I did this. So let me sketch these out real quick. I'm going to fast forward through this, and then I will come back and, and paint them.
Okay, so I kind of use this as my guide for sketching. I guess I need to go in closer, huh? Sorry. For sketching these. And no, they're not perfect, but I'm not really much of an artist or a sketching artist, sketch artist. So this is just, you know, the beginning. All right, so let's see what we can do to mess this up. <laughs> All righty. I need some water. Paper towel. Wet brush. And I'm going to use my Prima watercolors as usual. But I'm looking for the right shade of pumpkin orange. Is there such a thing? Whoa, that's dark. That is entirely too dark. Woo! That needs to be so much lighter. Let's direct this over here. And I really don't care if my pencil lines show. Basically, this is me trying to teach myself to do something I probably should have taken classes for. <laughs> there, well, maybe that's the, the, that could be the basis. And then the water that's left over from using too much there will be great for doing this one because it's in my, see, look at that, way too much watercolor. A little heavy handed this morning. I'm very excited about going shopping today. So I thought, well, let me just, while I'm waiting for the traffic to die down and all the workaday people to get to where they got to go, I will just come in here and try to get this, at least the base coat laid down. And then I, well, there's still a hanger on her there. I will um, go to the store after that. I've got about an hour's drive to the nearest decent store. There's a shopping center that I really like that has Hobby Lobby, Tuesday morning, Dollar Tree, and Big Lots all in one shopping center. All I have to do is park my car and then walk through the shopping center. Makes me so stinking happy. If, that, if, if the person who made that place or lined up those stores only knew what a favor they did for me. <laughs> It'll take me an hour to get there because it's outside of Fort Worth. So it'll take me a while to get there, but it is so worth the drive. And I might be able to find myself a Chick-fil-A today. I love Chick-fil-A, and I rarely get to eat it because I live in such a small town. We don't have those kind of amenities here. So, you know, going to the big city. All right, well, that doesn't look too horrible. Let's just, well, you know what? The water migrates toward the bottom. It's okay because isn't the pumpkin kind of... Well, some of them are a little darker, some of them are a little lighter towards the bottom because they turn colors from being on the ground like a, sometimes they're a yellow color. I know that about watermelon, that on the bottom of the watermelon it's yellow and it's nice and green and striped on the top, but on the bottom where it hasn't seen the light of day for months while it's growing, it's kind of yellowish and brown spots on the bottom. All right, so I've laid down my base coat for that. So let me sop up the orange paint out of the water bottle. Get that out of there. And it takes a couple pumps to clean out the dirty water out of there. All right, now we got some clean water. And I'm going to lay down the uh, base coat for the stems while I'm at it. And while I'm gone shopping today, this stuff can dry. I think I want to start with the light color and use the dark at, later on. I did not do stems in the other watercolor, so this is my educated guess. <laughs> I use the word educated lightly. All right, let's see. Uh, let's do a light color. Well, you can barely see that, huh? All righty then. Well, that one's a little darker. Oops. Don't necessarily need the watermelon, to be, uh, the watermelon, the um, pumpkin to be that color. Okay, so we'll get that out and I'll redo it. This is, 
kind of fun. I, I have to say, if I could find some place close to where I live to take watercolor lessons, I absolutely would do it because I totally love this. This is something I thoroughly enjoy. I have no idea what I'm doing. I would like to be a more a little more technical about it to learn more things. But this will be enough to get me by for the time being. Just this, this is just basically an experiment to see if I can do this on my own for a little bit until I can figure out how to get lessons somewhere close to where I live. I live in a town where there's only about 2,000 people, so, um, and the nearest large town that's got anything is about 45 minutes to an hour away. There are other smaller towns around us, but none of them have Michaels or art stores or scrapbook stores, absolutely no mixed media whatsoever. I don't think you can call Walmart one of those resources. <laughs> Although, I have to say, I purchased, I think that's where this watercolor, the pad I used in here, I think that might be where this came, this watercolor pad came from. All right, those are very pale looking um, water, uh, watermelons. I'm stuck on watermelons. I saw a picture of a watermelon. I thought I might like to paint. I thought, well, do I want to paint that in November? Yes, I do. <laughs> Maybe another day. <laughs> I thought, well, you know, maybe I should do something a little more monthly, a month appropriate. Let's try this. You're not going to see me um, painting the pilgrims or <laughs> the Native Americans and you no, know, definitely no turkeys. All right, so that's what I'm going to do for now. I'm going to let it dry while I'm gone. And when I get back, I'm going to look on Pinterest some more and look at um, sites where they explain about shading. Uh, the one, oh, you know what, before I forget, let me, <clears throat> the paint's still wet. I do want to do a color thing for the colors that I've used so that I can remember what I used. Maybe that's a little too long, huh? All right, so let's. Oh, that's awesome, Vicki. <laughs> Yeehaw! All right, well, it's already done. Okay, so this is number... Number 32, and I don't remember which set this came out, so this is number 32 from Prima. All right, and then the brown is... Oh, pfft. got orange mixed in with it. Let's try to get some clean water, dear. Urgh. All right, there we go. This is called chocolate, number 30. I should have put my pumpkins up higher. All right, number 30. There we go. All right, so that's it for now. And when I get back from shopping later today, I will finish this, and then it will be all dry so that when I do the shading, I think that will help it, you know, flow together. Although, maybe I should have done it wet. Yeah, let's try it. Let's throw caution to the wind and do uneducated stuff. <laughs> All right, guys, I will see you in a little bit. Bye. Okay, so I was gone a few hours, and my watercolor has had time to dry. I've looked at some watercolor pumpkins on Pinterest, and I see uh, a general theme of where to put darker colors on all the pumpkins. And... I need a thinner brush. Even though this is a water brush, I don't want to squeeze it because I'm so afraid I will over squeeze the water and it will be an unholy mess. So I'm going to go with the, I think I'm going to go with the number 10, which is a brown color. 
let me put it, it's kind of a dark brown. Can you see it? Oh, I'm sorry, here. Me, 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 me. Number 10, I'm gonna use that. What I've seen, from what I've seen in the other pictures looking at Pinterest, people took either a pen or a fine, fine line brush and outlined the um, sections of the pumpkin. While I, I, I don't like outlining with the watercolor brush, I think maybe, I'm wondering if I can't smear it just a smidgen to make it look, let's see, that one's too dark. Make it look a little smudged. So that it kind of gives it depth and shows, you know, the in-between parts of the pumpkin, the sections, the folds, whatever you want to call them. I don't know if this is going to work. We'll give it a shot. Like I said, this is all a learning experience. You know, I mean, if you don't ever stick your neck out, you're never going to know stuff works. And I am all about trying new things, and I'm okay with this. All right, so I'm going to, oops, I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to clean it and wet it, and then kind of drag it down the brown. And then I've seen um, where people have taken the pumpkin color that I used, which was number 32, where's 32, 32, and then made this a little bit darker. I don't know, I think that brown might be a little too dark. I'm not excited about how dark it is. That's a little too dark too, the orange. And then when I looked at the people's pumpkins, they had a lighter orange, so I'm going to try number four because I think this is going to be the highlight, if I can say it like that, where it's a little bit lighter. I don't know. I'm not sure. But I know I don't like that there. There we go. I don't know. That looks rather funny to me. I mean, it looks not fabulous, but it look horrible. So this is number four. And the brown is number 10. There we go. So, so I can remember where, what colors I used. Oh, and the lid came off here. Let's put this back on there. Okay, so let me see. Um, I can use the brown. Maybe I should use the chocolate again. This one. Let's try the chocolate. Maybe the other brown is too brown. All right, so let's use chocolate. Just, and that's, I didn't put enough pigment on there. I don't know. That doesn't look that doesn't look horrible. Might look a little better than the last one. Oh, gonna need some color. I'm trying not to overcolor so it's undercolored. You know what I mean? Alright. Hobby Lobby was almost empty when I went this morning. There weren't very many people in there. A lot of ladders blocking the aisles, though. 
I know they're trying to put stuff up, but it's a little hard to do shopping when you're having to dodge a ladder in the aisle. Although I know they got to work, but... All right, so this does not need to be a nice clean line. It should be blurred a bit. Yeah, I think that'll do it. I think it needs to be blurred. How's that? And then I saw people using kind of a yellow, co uh, a yellow color. Like over here on this side. From what I understand, you need to know your light source. And I have no idea. So that's something I need to learn about in some kind of a tutorials where the light source comes from and how it affects the rest of what you're doing. How does it change things? I have a feeling this is wrong because I don't know where the light source is. But you know, I think that comes with time and practice. All right. And maybe uh, number 21. Or not. <laughs> okay, how about... <laughs> that one, no, that one's not going to work for me. Um, this is 21. I don't want to use that one. Or I could. I could mix it with some of the yellow. I need a surface to mix it on. Uh, let's see, I have some stamp acrylic blocks here. Let me pull one out. I don't know where all my... Stuff is where I mix paint. I must have put, oh, here. Well, duh. All right, so here we go. All right, so I'm gonna take number 30, number four. Take a little bit of this bright orangey color. And then I'm gonna introduce it to number 30. Beep, 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 which is chocolate. And see what it does. It's darker than I want it to be. Okay. But if I do that, then I kind of have shadows here and then it's light there. So maybe that's not a bad thing. the bottom of the pumpkin on the ground probably is darker. Um, I still think I need a yellow. Um, let me do 21 without mixing anything else in it. Oh, there goes my light. I don't think I'm going to have a lot of white in this. You know, they said not to be afraid to leave white spots, so I think I need to stop now before I cover them all up. <laughs> all right, well... I don't know. Does that look like a pumpkin to you? I think these two right here need some c color something. I don't know. Uh, let's see, 32. See, there's so many colors in this thing. I don't remember which one is 32. I can't find 32. Oh, here. No, that's 21. Where's 32? Well, I said it was 32. <laughs> And there's no number 32 on here. <laughs> oh, there it is, right there. <laughs> the pumpkin looking color. <laughs> and look! <laughs> Imagine that! <laughs> Holy crow. 
Oh, I just let the dog in. Don't you know I get into this and now she wants to go out. All right, so let me go and work on a different one and leave this one alone before I screw it up. I think the most important thing about doing this is to know when to stop. <laughs> and evidently, I have not reached that point yet. I need this more watery. Yeah. Some pumpkins are darker than others. Oh, I kind of like that look. Maybe I should blot everything with the paper towel that has a design on it. Maybe the brown outline is not the way to go f either for this either. Maybe that's not what I need. It is kind of darkish. I might let that dry and redo that one. Alright, 32. Here we go. Make it watery, dear. Here we go. Oh, that silly dog. You guys got pets? You know what it's like? You're like knee deep in something. You're feeling totally creative and engulfed in it. And all of a sudden the dog goes, I have to go. Like seriously, now? Why, yes, now. <laughs> and guess what's going to happen if you don't let me out? <laughs> So, you know, then you go running and then I turn around and look at you like, why? Why are you opening the door? I was just standing here. <laughs> why is this an issue for you? Uh, I could give you a list of 20 reasons why I don't want to be standing here with you with the door wide open and you're just staring at me. Y'all, I know y'all have the same situation. Cats, forget it. Don't even get me started about the cats. We have a cat with two large dogs and it's... It's, um, <laughs> every day is a new problem. And they've lived together for, let's see, my oldest dog will be 11 next month. And she's lived with him, and he's lived with her since they were both babies. But yet they act like they have no idea who the other one is. Now the puppy that we have is two. The one who's moaning in the kitchen because she has to go out, who just came in 15 minutes ago. Um, she and the cat have this adversarial relationship. All right. I think maybe I should stop <laughs> before it starts to look like that one. But this one doesn't have any depth to it. This one does. So I think I'm going to do that to this one. Oh my goodness, she acts like she's dying. Which I happen to know for a fact she is not. <laughs> she just wants me to think she is, so I'll get up and run in there. What? What? <laughs> oh my goodness. You hear her? All right, so this one looks a well, I don't know. Let's see. Let's do this little in here. <laughs> She's still going. You haven't come yet. I'm going to die. All right. All right, so let me let the dog out, and then I'll finish. All righty. I'll give them six to eight minutes, and they'll be back at the door one back in the house because it's cold outside. Rainy. Wow, that's really dark. Whew. Don't want that. So let's water it down and spread it around. Maybe that will help to lessen the impact of that color. I went into Tuesday morning after I left Hobby Lobby and I was sorely disappointed. The, the little Tuesday morning that I go to, well, actually it's bigger than the one in a different town that I go to, but it still does not have anything that gets me excited. And I'm so disappointed. The last place I moved from had a fantastic Tuesday morning and that 
Man, I was there three or four times a week, scouring through all the stuff to see if I could find anything good. Because when I was in the other city, in the other state, it was Tattered Angels and that kind of stuff that was being dumped into Tuesday morning. So those were good deals. And I would go every day, every other day, to see if I could find a new color or, you know, find a good deal in them. And... Here, you've got to be kidding. Okay, um, so pumpkins sometimes have a little bit of green. So I'm going to take a wild leap of faith Ooh! and pick a green. I think it needs to be number... Oh, there's no number on this one. Outstanding. All right, so I ran out of places, so let's do it this way. This is kind of a grass green, mowed grass green, and there's no number on it, so I could I can't tell you what it is, and I don't have my um, stuff divided up in in um, oh the categories like uh, let's see was it I can't even remember the categories they come in. I have four empty containers. And I don't have all of their collection. I would like it, but I don't have all of it. Um, oof, that's a little much. All right, don't get carried away, Vicky. Pay attention to what you're doing. La la la. Maybe I should do it on the stem. That might be better than all brown. Yeah, you can barely tell. If I don't get too heavy-handed, it... You can hardly tell it's green. All right. I think we're getting close to being finished because I have a feeling a disaster is about to happen. Because I'm one of those people that steps one step over there like, Oh, I should have just stopped. <laughs> And then by the time you get to that point, you're like, oh, why did I not stop? I thought about it. And you're like, oh, I liked it at one minute before I didn't stop. <laughs> and I'm so guilty of doing stuff like that. I just should have stopped. <laughs> I, I, I know I hear the people going, oh, I should have stopped. All right. I'm going to stop now before something bad <laughs> happens to my stuff. <laughs> All right, so there it is. There's day number 15. I hope I'm on the right date. Uh, you know, I hope this is on the right date. Let me look at my computer. Oh, today is the 15th. Okay. All right, so it is the right date. <laughs> All righty then. This is my pumpkin for an homage to Thanksgiving. I should have done it the opposite way. The light bulb's over here for Christmas and then the pumpkin's on that side. <laughs> it's not horrible. Maybe when it dries, I can very lightly line it with the... Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. I love these things. The Signo Uniball DX pens. And it says it's, I think, a .38... Where is it? Uh, point three, no. Does that say two four? <gasps> Ooh, point two four. Ooh, that really is a fine line. Um, and I really like them because they're great for very small, detail-y things. I like the gel pens, but sometimes they throw clumps and they have a blob and you have to keep wiping them off and then you go back and it goes, you know, ink smudge. And I don't like that because, you know, I spent a whole half an hour doing this. <laughs> All right, that's it for me. Oh, my word. I have to figure out uh, what I'm going to do for tomorrow. I have something in mind. We'll see how it goes. All right, guys, I will see you later. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.